Fact. There are a lot of things we'd like to change in this world. Like, what if there were no homework over the weekends? Or more summer vacation? Or what if cupcakes became an acceptable breakfast food? What if you could change what bothers you about school? Or maybe you could change something about your home. How great would it be to change something in your community? Or even in the whole world? Look around. If there's one thing we all have in common, it's that there is some change we want to see happen in the world. When enough people decide to pursue a change in this world, it's called a movement. Another way to say it is that a movement is a group of people working together towards a common goal. So what's the movement we're part of here at church? It's the one that follows Jesus and wants to show others his love. Pretty major movement, huh? I think it's one that has the potential to change the world. Maybe you've heard of someone say that you can change the world. Yes, you. If you haven't, let me be the first to tell you that I believe it's true. All of you watching this can be world changers. We may hear that and get super pumped up. It's exciting for us to think about being a part of a movement that could change something in this world. I mean, like sign us up, right? Or maybe we hear that and don't think much of it. After all, it's sort of one of those things people say a lot. I mean, think about it. YouTube ads promote it. Our parents say it as we head out the door. Our teachers have displayed it all over the classroom. Even though it sounds cool, it doesn't seem that real to us. And maybe if we're honest, we admit that it kind of feels like too big of a responsibility. The world is a huge place and we're just one person. What can we do to actually make a change in this world? We don't even know where to start. And even if we did, we're honestly a little too scared to try. If that's how you feel, let me just tell you that I can totally relate. Back in eighth grade, I loved to sing. Like I would sing while doing chores, while doing homework, I would sing all around the house, but I never sang in public. Like I even sang in the shower. Like have you even, have you, have you sung in the shower? Everybody sounds good in the shower, but I never sung in public. And one day my mom signed me up for our youth choir. I was angry. I was so mad that she signed me up to sing in front of people. I even went to my dad and I told my dad, dad, please, I do not want to do this. And my dad would just stand all elegant and say, uh-uh, stop playing video games, you must sing. I had no choice. So as I was singing in this youth choir, we had a tour coming up and I looked on the list of all the different spots and I thought to myself, maybe if I just stand in the back and lip sing and just pretend I won't be noticed. So I read the list of all the different parts of this play and I saw that I was the very first solo. I wasn't gonna sing with everybody, I was singing by myself. And I saw that the place that we would be singing at wasn't the church, wasn't a school, but it was at a prison. I was terrified. I was intimidated. I did not know what to do. So why am I telling you about this story? It's because I want you to know that you're not alone in feeling scared. The whole idea of doing something to change the world is scary. It feels like this big impossible thing that we just wouldn't be capable of doing. Because you think you don't know how to do it, or you're not sure where to start, or you think you've made too many mistakes to help anybody else, or you think that you're the only ones that care or you don't know how to keep going once you've began, or you're just afraid of failing. But what if I told you that all this change the world stuff really is possible for you? In fact, it's something that can happen in big and small ways when we join a movement to follow Jesus. Because changing the world is something he did thousands of years ago, and it's something he gives his followers a chance to do too. So how do I know this? It's because of something Jesus said during his final moments on earth. Jesus challenged his disciples, the closest people to him while he was on earth. These people did everything with Jesus. They witnessed him doing some of the most unbelievable and life-changing things, from healing the sick, to calming the sea, to even rising from the dead. You'd think they believed that with Jesus, they could do anything. Well, remember, like us, they were human. And part of being human is experiencing the very real fear that you might not be able to do the big, crazy, almost impossible thing you're asked to do. So I had to imagine that when Jesus asked his disciples to literally go out and change the world, they were a little nervous. Could they really do it? Well, let's look at what Jesus said. Jesus came and told his disciples, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. And be sure of this, I'm with you always, 
even to the end of the age. This sounds like a pretty big order, right? Basically, Jesus asked his followers to go out and do something huge, like to spread the movement to others, to go literally everywhere and teach people about him. I don't know about you, but that sounds impossible to me. It feels like too big of a movement to jump into and actually make an impact. I imagine the disciples might have felt the same way. At this time, they weren't even safe in their own country. Like leaders in their nation were out to arrest and even kill them simply because they followed Jesus. So the idea of going into other unknown parts of the world and spreading the movement of Jesus, well, that had to have seemed crazy. And I'm sure it would have been scary, but still Jesus called them to do it. He gave them a big vision for the impact they could have in bigger places. Did he know that sometimes they'd be scared? You bet. Did Jesus know that it would be really difficult sometimes? even more than you would ever know. But Jesus also knew that with him, the disciples could do it. His belief in them helped them believe too, both in themselves and in the movement. Think of it this way. Have you ever seen a relay race where a baton gets passed from athlete to athlete? The baton is used to tell the next person that it's their turn to go. In a way, Jesus was handing his disciples a baton. It was like he was saying, okay, now it's your turn. Now you can go and make an impact in your world. And the same can be true for us. It's your turn. Jesus is passing the baton to each of us. He's calling us to go, to serve, to speak up, to share his good news, to love other people, to be part of his movement, to change the world. And he's also telling us that sometimes that means doing things we're afraid of. In other words, Jesus is saying, do something you're scared to do. So all those amazing changes we want to see in the world, we can be a part of making them happen. But in order to do that, we can't let fear hold us back. Just think about the disciples. Were they scared? Probably, but we know they did it anyways. They took small steps that made big changes in the world. They kept the movement of Jesus growing and going so that we can still be a part of it today. So you're probably asking, how were they able to do it? Well, let's look back at the last thing Jesus said. Be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus promised to be with the disciples always, not just sometimes, not just when it's easy, not just when they needed him, but always. And it's the same promise he makes with you and me. As followers of Jesus, his very spirit lives inside us. He goes with us wherever we go, like he's closer than close. When we join the movement and step out to do something that scares us, we can do it because we know we aren't doing it alone. Just imagine what could happen if we decide to simply start. If we decided to take the baton Jesus had given us and run with it. If we did the thing that we're scared to do. If we didn't let our fears and our anxieties stop us. The cool thing is that the movement is already happening. This isn't new. And that means all we have to do is join in. And if we do, the possibilities to impact and help others are endless. So do something you're scared to do. And here's how you can start. First, name what you're scared to do. And I'm not talking about this year's best haunted house or a roller coaster at your local theme park. I'm talking about the thing you might be afraid to do that has the potential to change the world around you for the better. Maybe for you, that's actually like signing up for the next mission trip or loving the person in your family that's hard to love. Or it looks like donating your allowance to a cause that's important to you. Or it's choosing to say something when someone is being hurt or bullied. Or learning about an organization or a person already working to serve others in big ways. Or even serving in your ministry in your church every single week. Whatever it is, name it. Next, ask God for the courage to do it. Ask God to help you do something you think you can't do for someone else. To make an impact you're not sure you can make. To actually do the thing you're scared to do. Pray that he'll give you the words, the thoughts, the actions, the courage to make it happen. Ask God to help you take the first step to join the movement. Finally, make that step. Do the next thing that moves you in the right direction. Sometimes it can feel overwhelming when you look at the whole movement. So instead, think of it just in the next step. All these big movements were started in small steps, and yours can too. Take one tiny step by signing up to serve each week, or texting that person who's hard to love, or ask to get together with an adult and talk, or speaking up in small group, or even researching that organization. Maybe it's as simple as telling someone, like your group leader, what step you want to take. They're there to help you, support you, love you, cheer you on as you take these steps to do something you're scared to do. And remember, you're not doing this alone. God promised the disciples that he'd be with them, always. And he promised the same thing for you. His very spirit lives inside of you. 
and he'll never leave you and he'll always help you. If he calls you to do something you're scared to do, he will go with you when you do. So back when my mom signed me up for that solo in front of the inmates in the jail, I was extremely intimidated and scared, but I knew that God was going to be with me through every step of the way. I mean, I was fearful, I was intimidated. I was standing in front of guards, inmates, everybody that was in the jail singing the first solo. But I knew that God wasn't gonna let me do it alone. And the same thing can happen with all of us. I believe the same thing can be true for you. You can step out and join the movement to do something you're scared to do and to see what amazing things happen when you do. And the good news, you have people in your group to make sure you don't take that step alone. Your group is a great place to talk about how you can take a step to do something you're scared to do and encourage each other along the way.